Hello, this is Teacher Ronald. In this video, we're going to look at the analysis of the title Devil on the Cross by Nguji Thiongo. In the previous video, we looked at the introduction to A level literature or advanced level literature. And uh, if you didn't watch that video, I would just want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel, L E L L, English Language and Literature, and you not miss any video that I post in here. Okay, for this lesson today we're going to look at the title Devil on the Cross and that is all. Okay, why Devil on the Cross? We all know that uh, it is Jesus that was put on the cross, it's Jesus that was crucified, whatever that takes place is in the Bible, but then is Devil on the Cross as a novel another Bible? Those are some of the questions that people who haven't read Devil on the Cross actually ask. And people who go into Red Devil on the Cross think they are going to see the devil with seven horns being put on the cross. They expect to see people, um, uh, elites coming up to say now we are tired of sin and therefore we should stop this kind of, of Satan, we should crucify the devil. Is it what takes place in the novel? Stay tuned and we we'll see. Okay. Just like we discussed in the previous video, Devil on the Cross is just a very symbolic title. But beyond the symbolism, there is also irony. At this moment, I think we have looked at the major aspects of literature and we could be knowing what symbolism is and what irony is. When we talk about symbolism in here, we are simply looking at the title representing a bigger idea, a bigger item something bigger than what it is just as devil on the cross. When we talk about irony, we simply mean that it differs or it goes away from what we expect or what the original thing is. What's the original idea? The original idea is that we know it is Jesus that is put on the cross. That's why when we meet the devil on the cross as the novel, we are at first shocked. Why devil? Okay, then what, how do they put the devil on the cross? And all of us may be running to read and see because we are tired of the devil anyway and we think we can get ideas from this book to put the devil to the stop. But then when you say it is ironic, it means that actually we don't see the physical devil being put on the cross. It is instead the ideas, the, the different uh, dangerous and uh, 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 deeds that affect people socially, culturally, economically, people that have people are affected politically, all those deeds that are, are demonic, that are satanic, that affect people are the ones that are going to look at as the devil in this book. Although we have people who actually represent those particular deeds and they can be devils themselves. Okay, now Gujo Thiongo actually uses this title to particularly look at the origin, to show the people, the readers, the origin and the conflict between good and evil that we can, we can always have these two conflicting. There are people who are going to be fighting to bring good in society, and there are people who are going to be fighting to bring evil in society. And as we read the novel, we shall see that actually among these good things that the uh, devil on the cross advocates, or that Nguji advocates in his novel, Devil on the Cross, is uh, um, peace financial independence, and then the political independence of the country. Those are the good things that really are advocated in the book. But then we have the evil ones. There are those evil things that people will always have to strive to bring. And ironically, these are the people that we associate with that we expect to be bringing that good thing. Now, these evils are going to actually be things like exploitation, greed and materialism. All these ones affect the lives of people that are surrounding us. And then we also have particular neocolonialism. Okay, this is actually a very big evil that after Kenya has got independence, we expect that it's going to really be independence. But the independence they have is actually in brackets. Why do we say so? The people in Kenya are themselves who act in a satanic way to bring back colonialism. And that one now becomes neocolonialism in any way. And the people end up being uh, in suffering just like they had been before when they were with the colonizers and some of them actually go through worse conditions than before that's why we say now 
we're seeing the devil. Are they going to put the devil on the cross? And if there is a devil anyway, who is the devil? And then who put the devil on the cross? Wow, that's a question that we're going to be analyzing. Thank you. Okay, now we have to understand some things about devil on the cross as a novel. But then we need to first understand devil on the cross as a title. The crucifixion of the devil is offered to readers in the form of Waringa's dream. Particularly, the very first time we meet Waringa is a very puzzled woman who has lost her job of present. But before losing, uh, losing uh, that job, she has struggled a number of times to get a job in the streets of Nairobi, but all in vain. Then after having got a job, she is supposed to offer herself for sex to boss Kihara when she refuses because she's protecting herself for her own Johnny Kimwana, that is her boyfriend. Reaching home, telling the story to the boyfriend, boyfriend thinks that is a lie. Waranga has been offering legs to this man and today could have been something else and she's trying to lie and also drops her. So, in that bid, she wants to commit suicide. The landlord has chased her out of the house and she has nowhere to go. She is confused and she wants to commit suicide. But then because she's saved by someone that we later come to know as one of the advocators of, of peace and of freedom, she gets a dream. And let us just see what she goes through in this dream. She saw first the darkness carved open at, the, at one side to reveal a cross which hung in the air. Then she saw a crowd of people dressed in rags, walking in the light, propelling the devil towards the cross. You can see this statement is actually very strong. The people that are putting, that are putting the devil to the cross are actually not elites. They are people putting on rags. But ironically, these are the people who are walking in the light. Wow! They are walking in the light, but they are in the rags, meaning these people are actually poor. They could be peasants, and ironically, they are in light, meaning they are the peasants who actually understand the condition that the devil has taken them through, and they are the people who want to get rid of that devil. Okay, let's continue. The devil was clad in slick suit. Now, you can just imagine the devil is being taken to the cross. But this gentleman is even clad, but is also in a slick suit, meaning that he's actually a very expensive gentleman, this devil that we're going to be looking at. And then he carried a walking stick shaped like a folded umbrella. On his head there were seven horns, seven trumpets for sounding infernal dreams of praise and glory. The devil had two mouths. Okay, there are two mouths. One on his forehead and one at the back of his head. His skin was red, like that of a pig. Now, these underlying lines are the ones that I want us to look at. Particularly, one, the people that are putting the devil on the cross or that are propelling the devil to go to the cross are actually the peasants. They are in rags. And these are people who are ironically walking in the light. These are the people who know the political situation of the country and they want change, they want peace, they want democracy. But the devil is not sad, he's glad. That is also very ironical. What does that mean? As if the devil won't go anywhere. Even if you're taking me, I'm not going to stay there. That is the smell that someone puts on when they know they're going to prison but they're not going to stay there. Is that happening in our community? Of course. Now, this devil has two mouths. One is on the forehead and one at the back of his head. This is actually a symbolism of, uh, of, of colonialism. These people are going, but anyway, they're just smiling because after all, even at the back, they have the mouth. What does this mean? People at the, uh, that are remaining in Kenya are actually going to represent them very well. Then this devil was red. Hmm? His skin was red, like that of a pig. This one is actually symbolic of the colonizers, people that had taken over Kenya. So in this dream, actually, we're seeing a lot. We're seeing the whites, we're seeing neocolonialism, we're seeing the people struggling to take away people that have been colonizing them for so long. Okay, Warringa's dream actually continues to this. We have to see the devil being crucified. 
You commit murder. Then you don your robes of pity and you go to wipe the tears from the faces of orphans and widows. You steal food from people's stores at midnight. Then at dawn, you visit the victims wearing your robes of charity and you offer them a calabash filled with grain that you have stolen from them. That is in the second chapter of the book, Devil on the Cross, and page 13. The people that are crucifying the devil are actually going to pronounce the evil deeds of the devil. Just like what you see on the Bible, uh, the people that are taking the that are taking the Savior, Jesus Christ, this time around are not actually the local people. We are seeing that here there are people in drugs, they are the poor people, the peasants. Those ones are actually the allies instead who take Jesus to, to the cross. These ones are actually the very poor people. Now, what do you have to understand here? One, the devil is very pretentious. He commits murder and then will come and begin weeping away the tears of orphans and, 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 and orphans, pretending to be so good, pretending to be uh, emotionally attached uh, by what has happened to the, the families of these people. Then, he also goes on to steal food from the people's stores at night. And then in the morning, he will come and tell the people, oh, sorry, we're offering you this and this. Now, this novel is actually criticizing what happens with international capital international assistance, international aid, that international countries will come and organizations will come to offer help. But then the author as if is saying, this help is coming, but it is the thing that they have taken away from you previously. Okay? So in other words, the, 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 the novel is criticizing international capital, that people come in and before that they have done a lot of murder to the people the country okay that is very bad anyway now when we go on we we come to see that after three days just like what happens in the bible the devil is from the cross after three days there came others dressed in swords and eyes what is the difference between the ones who crucify and the ones who resurrect is here people who crucify the devil actually are in rags the peasants this who are coming to uh, to, 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 to the devil at this moment are actually in suits and ties. What do they come to do? Uh, keeping close to the wall of darkness, they lifted the devil from the cross. This is how our iron is actually continue to grow. That people who are lifting the devil from the cross are actually in suits and ties. These are the allies, the people who have, who have made some money in the country. And then they are instead in darkness. They, in comparison, the first ones, even when they were in rags, these peasants were actually working in light, meaning that they, they know what they are doing. These ones actually are doing a bad thing. Okay, and then they, they, and they knelt before him, and they prayed to him in loud voices, beseeching him to give them a portion of his robes of cunning. This is very ironical. That people have struggled to put away what is evil in their society, and there are some that come to instead put back what is evil. This is also a very big irony. Okay, obviously, um, this story is actually a telling of crucifixion of Jesus Christ, just reference to the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. In this case, however, the only difference is that the devil is not being persecuted by the powerful like it is for the for Jesus case that is being indicted by those people who are peasants who are poor people who are in rags but similar to the to the story of Christ the devil is also resurrected but of course he doesn't resurrect by himself people resurrect him and these are the elites Now, uh, it is very important to also look at why these elites come in to rescue the devil from the cross. Of course, it means they have been getting something from him. Maybe that's the reason as to why they are putting on uh, better clothes than, than the peasants. They have been exploited, the peasants, and then the, uh, the elites are the ones who maybe are used by the devil to exploit peasants. Let's continue to see. So in the in, in the novel is actually a personification of the international capital or colonial capital just like we mentioned before foreign aid that this uh that these people who are also act, acting as 
the, the, the disciples from your capital or the native elite are also actually after the devil's they after the devil's wrong deeds and meaning that they are going to carry all their deeds the needs of the people all the exploitative practices that have been introduced by the devil before that have been introduced by the greed exploitation and materialism colonialism are going to be carried by these native elites and this is very bad so one could of course read uh, the title as a reversal of the traditional associations of the people of Kenya in particular but of Africa in general where people have been believing in particular political policies, economic policies in a particular way, but then they are reversed in a way that they will act based on the, uh, on the suggestions or decisions of other countries. But also you can refer this novel as a journey into the functioning of, uh, of the devil of capital and the possibilities that this capitalism is going to be are protested against by the, the people, especially the workers, the peasants, and the poor. Then the elites, or the native elites, people who have worked with this uh, kind of capitalism are the ones who are maybe going to support it. And first and foremost, when we read the book actually, we see that we see these two categories in two opposite sides. The elites will be supporting the devil, or the devil of capitalism to be back and ecologism to be back to continue but then the people in rags represented by Wale, Waringa, Moturi will say no. Okay, the devil appears again to Waringa while at golf course when they have reached Morocco again in a dream. It is a voice that admits being the oppressor, exploiter, a liar and a grabber. That is on page 192 of the novel. This similar voice appears to Jesus Christ in the Bible in Matthew 4, 8 and tempts Jesus by taking him to the high peak of the mountain to show him the different positions of the world, saying that you should worship me. Just like what happens here. Hmm? What is your name? Oppressor? Exploiter, liar, grab. I am worshipped by those who love to dispose of goods that have been produced by others. Give me your soul and I'll guard it for you. This is very ironical, and of course, Waringa has to refuse. This is the voice of Satan, actually. And in this case, this devil in the book is representing all the deeds, the evil deeds that they that and neocolonialism is bringing, that exploitation, greed, and materialism are bringing to the people. The devil is now all bad deeds that take place in their book. In conclusion, what are the, 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 the uh, where, where are the areas that the devil is put on the cross? It is, when Warenga fights against colonialism, Together with, remember when we meet, uh, I mean Wangari, when Wangari meets uh, uh, the people in the Matatu, Matata Matamu, 33, we see her as a person who had fought during the time of, 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 of Harambe, fighting for the independence of the people of Kenya. So when she does that, she's actually trying to get rid of one of the evils, that is colonialism. Wangari also accepts to help the police arrest the, the thieves in Imorok. This is when Wangari is actually is in prison, in, in, in the court, and says, you know, I know where the thieves are. For me, I'm not a thief. I've been here looking for a job. So she explains that she's going to help the police in Imorok to arrest all the thieves. So by doing that, she's trying to get rid of the evil of exploitation, theft, and robbery in the country. By doing that, by doing that, Wangari is actually accepting to put the devil on the cross. Three, Waringa also refuses to be Boskihara's sugar girl. During this time in Kenya, 
we see that the Menegalos have been exploited. According to the story of Warenga, we remember that Warenga has ever been exploited sexually. The rich old man from Goreka, for example, he pregnants her and denies the pregnancy, leaving the girl drop out of her senior two class to go and uh, produce the, uh, the baby and leave the baby with the mother to go and struggle for her own life. So this ex exploitation doesn't have to continue. And that's why Waringa refuses Boski Harald's uh, idea of, of sleeping with him. Muturi and a student leader also collect workers and student lead, uh, students to chase away the thieves in the cave. Remember the student leader is one person that uh, we recognize as, as, as a, 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 the man with a goatee Beard. This is the person who goes to collect all the students in Imorok. And then Muturi goes to collect all the workers in Imorok to come and collect the army of workers or generally the peasants and students to go and chase away the thieves from the cave. And of course, by doing that, they are trying to put the devil on the cross. They are sending away the devil. They are getting uh, off uh, the devil from themselves. Murero Wamukira is also another person that we have to look at very critically. In his presentation of the speech in the cave, Murero does not agree to have uh, whites in the association of thieves who exploit people in Kenya. He thinks that exploitation is good because anyway, that's one of the ways of developing the country. But then, he doesn't propose that they should continue having whites in their midst. However, ironically, this annoys the rest of the people in Kenya. That is how funny it can be. Maybe that's when Waringa's dream actually begins to manifest, that the devil is put on the cross, and then after some time, there are people who come to take the devil off the cross. This is very funny. Now, when the rest of the people oppose Murero Mukrai's um, idea, is when we see that actually Kenya is colonized again. It is now in phase two of colonialism, and that is neo colonialism. That the rest of the people, those are the elites, prefer having the whites in, the midst, uh, in their midst as they, they, they exploit fellow Kenyans and they even help the whites to exploit fellow Kenyans. Now, as a result, the punishment for Mirero Amukira is actually death. Warunga doesn't manage to help Murero Mukrai, even when the, devil's, the devil uh, speaks to her at the golf course and tells her, you know what, this is what's going to happen to Murero Mukrai, go and save. When she tries to come and save, well, it is too late and Murero uh, dies uh, in the pretense of an accident. And actually, it is Waura who kills Murero Mukrai. Very unfortunate. Why does he do that? He wants to gain, and of course he gains that. Uh, he gets cars and materialistic possessions. The other area where the devil is put on the cross is Waringa studying very hard and becomes an engineer, actually an, a mechanic who even the men cannot manage to beat because she's supposed to be the best mechanic when she goes to the garage and shows the problem immediately when the men were not able to find the problem and then they accept her to be among them and work with her. Now, there are men who think that women are simply uh, playing toys. And what happens? Warunga has to show them challenges. By doing what? Kicking them. This is manifest when he kicks the man who touches her buttocks. When she's trying, she, she leans on uh, against the car to begin working upon it. Okay? That's, he's now trying to fight the spirit of male dominance and overshadowing the, the women. The last one we can look at is Warunga killing the rich old man from Gorika. That is actually Gaturia's father. Warunga's love with Gaturia is so strong. And she wouldn't want, even Gaturia himself didn't want to lose Warunga. And you know, even Rudas she wouldn't want really Warunga to lose uh, 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 Gaturia and wouldn't also want the same to happen to, to Gaturia. Now, when she realized that actually Gaturia's father is the same rich old man from Goreka who had impregnated her during her childhood in school, 
and then dropped her. Meaning that Gaturia is actually a brother to Amboy, the little one of Marenga. She gets very angry and by killing this gentleman and a few other guests and kicking other guests is a sign of putting the devil of sexual exploitation to the cross. Wow! This is what we can actually look at as uh, an, an area of, of, of exploitation and uh, maybe generally the whole of this area will be showing us the areas where the devil is put on the cross. And in any case, the question would be, how relevant is the title Devil on the Cross to the novel? So these are some of the areas you can look at. And as a student of literature, of course, this is not enough. You can go on and look at other areas where the devil is put on the cross. Look at all the deeds, the deeds that are not good, things that are done but not good, people who do bad things, actual all devils. And anything that is done to limit them from doing the bad things is actually an act of putting the devil on the cross. Look at all the people in the cave. Itutu wakatanguru. Kihahu wakatheka. Look at Kimenderi, Kimengemengi, and all others. All those ones are actually representing the devil. And when we push them out of the cave, or when we oppose them, when we bring the people uh, to the cave to chase them away from the cave, is actually an act of putting the devil on the cross. Okay, in case you enjoyed this video, I just want to ask you to subscribe to my YouTube channel and I promise you won't miss any video that I put up here. Just stay tuned and the next thing that we're going to look at is actually going to be character and characterization, beginning with the major characters uh, like um, Jacinta, Hungary, and then Gaturia. Stay tuned. I love you so much.